You know, we are, as we go through this life transition and everything that's been going on in our lives, you know, from the moment that we've been brought forth and birthed into this realm, not really knowing who we were, where we came from, or the truth. But knowing that there was something in us that we were supposed to, we were do, supposed to do more. There's something that was placed in us saying, you know what, there's something more about this besides just living for myself. We were always told that we needed to be somebody and we already were somebody. So that always placed something before us, always trying to reach a place of being somebody. There was a goal of being somebody. And being somebody in the world meant wealth, fame, fortune. Amen? Successful. But that's not what the eyes of God saw. See, we were pre-approved and predestined in that arena. But in that, in the process, we always lived a life of, to do what we felt like. So, we lived a life of incomplete. In other words, we'd start something but not complete it. We always lived a life of shortcut. Believe me, I was the first one who ran across the front lawn. Forget driveways, sidewalks, I didn't care. You know, they got drive through everything now. I haven't seen any of got drive communion and drive through churches, you know. <laughs> but we've, we, we, we have a, a, a fallen carnal nature that says, let's get it quick and now, and why pay the price for it? That's why there's so much crime. You know, they're always trying to shortcut. As a drug dealer, it was a place of shortcut. Everything was a shortcut, incomplete. Lived a life of totally incomplete. It wasn't until I got saved that I began to complete things because I knew there was something more important about complete. Complete was associated with an area of being honest and, and being faithful to what was being given to me in, in, in vow. Need to complete this. If we said that we were going to do something, we needed to complete it. But see, the enemy loves to interrupt anything that's completed because if you don't complete, if you don't complete the purpose or the, the process, you can't complete the fulfillment. See, God always prepares us for something to come. And if we don't complete the preparation for what's coming, we miss it. Why? Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And it originated right in the garden. And, and there's just some things, in other words, we must complete to complete. Does everybody get this? We must what? Complete to complete. In other words, no matter what you're doing, if you don't complete what's happening, the, the training or the repair or whatever it is that's going on, it's going to come back on us. See, so we're in a process right now, of, we're trying to complete the disconnects and the attachments of carnality of worldliness so we can complete the full call that's called to us. All of these things are always interfering. And the enemy loves to reattach things that seem good, but they're not God. And it prevents us from complete. Genesis 1.26. Glory to God. Then God said... Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish and over the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the image he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So we were called to be fruitful and multiply. This is the summary of all creation. Because God was creating his own race. Amen? Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And already gave dominion. And in Genesis 2.15, in Genesis 2.15, he says, 
Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. This was a process of training in a place of security. And the Lord God commanded, everyone say commanded. The man saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat it, you shall what? Surely die. So God placed his creation of an image and preparing him to become more and more like his likeness, <laughs> performing likeness, by training in a place of security for him. Amen? So again, the, in Genesis 1, it was the summary of creation. He said, here's the purpose I'm creating you to be what? Fruitful and multiply. I'm creating you. I'm giving you an image like myself. Now, image means look. Almost like an image of look. Likeness is associated with character. And so he puts them in a place for training. And he warns them. So this is the command to maintain. This is the command to keep. To be complete. He said, listen, here's important. Do not partake of this. Look at there's trees all over the place. You can eat all of these things. These things are here for your physical, spiritual, physical body. And there's food for your spiritual man. So there's physical and spiritual food in the garden to maintain eternal life. He said, but man, if you take this one, if you partake of anything associated with this tree of good and evil, it's going to interrupt. It's going to interrupt. You will not be complete. Because I'm bringing you to a process of complete. So you must complete what I tell you to become what? Complete. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Um, verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I'll make him a helper com comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every tree of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Now I want you to know something because, remember he sent them into the garden to train. Amen. So there was there, there were seeds, there was trees and so forth. And he places creation of image in performing likeness by training in a secured garden surrounded by trees that bear physical fruit and spiritual fruit. Only one type of tree. That tree was known as the tree of deception and rebellion. It also carried fear and bondage and death. Amen. It brought spiritual blindness. He didn't tell him all of these things. He didn't have to explain to him everything that was going to happen if you partook of this. He just said, don't do it. See, so many times we want to ask why instead of obeying. Hallelujah. Do not partake. It was a command given to maintain a fruitful and productive multiplying life to create a race of the children of God. Amen. It was a plan of direction to complete. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God gave, created, he said, look it, I'm going to give you the animals to help to multiply. The first thing, remember, he said, be fruitful and multiply. That was a call. That was a purpose. So he's going to give the animals, he's going to give them animals. Remember, God was still looking at fruitful multiply. Well, what do the animals do? They eat and they poop. They plant seed everywhere, don't they? They clean up stuff. Does everybody understand that? So Adam was going to use them to garden. Does everybody understand? Get this. Remember, the animals were used for this. Look what they use now. Manure everywhere. Amen? All kinds of stuff grows out of them. So we know that the animals are created first in that area to maintain the plant, to maintain the property, to maintain the land. Why? To continue fruitful and multiply. God always, in other words, God isn't going to create a bunch of people and not be able to feed them. 
Amen? Everything is always a, a pre preparation of complete to complete. That's how God operates. And we've got to understand that. So when the enemy tries to interrupt something to be completed, you know there's a higher purpose and a higher calling, something better than what you're, you're looking. You can't be short-sighted of things. You've got to see things all the way through. Hallelujah. Now let's go a little further. Glory to God. In verse 20. So Adam gave the names to all the cattle, right? In 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slapped and closed up the flesh. And he, and he took one of his ribs out. And he closed up the flesh in its place. Then the, the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman and brought their the woman to him and Adam said this is now the bone of my bones the flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh now they were both naked and the man and his wife and were not ashamed hello now we know that the woman was to produce offspring. I don't know how it was going to be produced prior. It never explains. I imagine the same way. Amen. But we were to produce. God was using. He said be multiplying. Be fruitful and multiply. We were to be carriers of his image. That would become his likeness. Starting with a free will. We had a free will of choice. That's a part of his likeness. That's a part of his character, his integrity, free will. That's where you and I are part of his likeness. Amen? To have a what? Free will to choose. Then we have in Genesis 3, in verse 1. Genesis 3, to me, is probably the most transitional chapter which brings so much reality of the unseen to become seen. And it says, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God made. And he said to the woman, so I'll let you know that the serpent was in the garden. Hello. Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? To eat is to what? Partake. Amen. Amen. And a woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So she quoted what God said. How many of all, God only doesn't warn you one time. <laughs> he warns us many times. Then a serpent said to the woman, God's a liar. You shall not surely die. Instead of running, she tried to, she didn't do anything. She said, for God knows, he says, for the servant says, for God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, which will be open to the physical and close to the spiritual. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He didn't tell her that she would become good and evil. He didn't, tell, he didn't lie about knowing good and evil, but the problem was to become good and evil. That's what God was avoiding. God was going to teach them what good and evil was in the garden. But he didn't want them to become good or evil. He wanted to become life, life-bearing, righteous, fruitful, multiply, spiritual, eternal beings on this realm. So when the, saw, when the woman saw that the tree, or the spirit, was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. That doesn't mean that they were blinded. There was no self involved. Because see, with their self involved, there's shame. There was no self involved. Remember, they were created in purity. There was no guilt, no condemnation, nothing. Just pure God. And their eyes were open, so they showed fig they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves. Am I in the right place? Yeah. Verse 7. 
So she, oh, let's go to verse 6. So when a woman said it was good, she took of it. She also gave it to her husband. They ate, verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves, themselves, covering. So they tried to cover themselves because of their shame. Now listen, we know that there was a fall of interruption because you've got to remember, God had already told them, which the serpent knew, be fruitful and multiply to create a race. So the enemy wanted to prevent that fruitful and multiplying to cease or to fruitful and multiply according to his image and not God's image. Amen? So whether they partook of a tree, I can't, I can't say that they ate of an apple and then they got seduced. But we know that the serpent seduced Eve to produce offspring. Amen? We know that there was an interruption. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Glory. So, verse 8, because they blew it, they covered themselves, they heard the voice of God because they were blinded. Walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. It's amazing how many times people run from God's presence. See, you got to know something. This is, gosh, I, like I said, this, cha the, the, this chapter is so truthful, intensifying. If we really grab hold of it, what's the first thing that uh, and, uh, the enemy wants to do is keep you from the presence of God? Why? No conviction. Hard in the heart. So when somebody blows it, the first thing they want to do is run to darkness, not to light. They, want to re they run to religion. <laughs> they run to the head and not the heart. Amen? Oh, glory. All right. Then the Lord God called to Adam like he didn't know where he was. And he said, where are you at, Adam? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Now, so the Lord is going to reveal another voice. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, the woman. Here we go, blame. Right? It's the blame game. The woman you gave me, the woman that you took, you know, you put me to sleep for a reason. You could have just, and there she was. The woman you gave me. Oh, she did it all. <laughs> the, the woman you gave to me, she gave to me of the tree and I partook. And I woke up. And man, what the heck happened? Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you've done? And the woman said, well, the serpent deceived me. What are you doing communicating with the serpent? So the Lord God said to the serpent. Now he didn't ask the serpent what he did. He already knew. Has so everybody got it? The Lord knew already what the serpent did. This is what we got to look at. He says, because you've done this, you're cursed more than all the cattle, and more than any, every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust. All the days of your life. And I'll put hatred between you and the woman. And between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, but you shall bruise his heel. And then he turns to the woman and he says, look it. Because you've done this, I'm going to greatly multiply your, your sorrow and your conception. Again, why would he judge in that area if she wasn't seduced by the serpent? Hello? He could have said, well, you're never going to grow long hair again. Or something, whatever, you know. And in pain you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be for your husband. Now, why would he tell your desires for your husband? Because it went for the serpent. And he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, you idiot. No. <laughs> Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of the, which I command you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Curses the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. 
both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife, his name Eve, because she was now the mother of the living in another realm. Also for Adam, him and his wife, the Lord, he took their coverings away and made them tunics of skin, which were animal skins, and clothed them. Why? Because the animals that were in the garden were not eternal. They were temporary. So they had to have blood. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. So the animals that God created were temporary. But Adam and Eve were eternal. Amen? So now that Adam and Eve became temporary, he took the sacrifice of an animal and took their blood, shed their blood, and clothed them and took away their own labor of covering. Amen? Because the animals were associated with life, weren't they? But it was blood. So they co he covered them and gave them tunics around so that they could wear to hide their nakedness. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground for which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and flaming sword, which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. And we know that Jesus is the tree of life. Again, the enemy interrupted. There was an interruption of the completion to complete the plan of God. What? To become fruitful and multiply? In his image, it was postponed to become like his likeness. Everything was now postponed. Eve bore the two children, Cain and Abel. One was wicked, one was righteous, offsprings of deception and rebellion. One was righteous and trustworthy, and the other one was, what? <laughs> Deceptive and rebellion. Amen? So here, and here, the a Adam was one that was, now they both became knowledgeable of good and evil, but it wasn't just knowledgeable of good and evil. They became good and evil. They were now a tree themselves that was bearing fruit of good and evil because they are now the offsprings. Amen? God again wanted to train them by what was good and evil. But now they became good and evil in the likeness of darkness. Genesis 5 and verse 1. Complete to complete. Is everybody okay? In verse 1, this is the book of genealogy of Adam. And the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Did he make him in the likeness of God? Yes, he did. Adam was. Adam carried the character. He created them, male and female, and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. And Adam lived 130 years, 130 years, and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. So after 130 years of being on the earth, there was the first one in his image was Seth. That means that Adam, the in the original state of becoming one flesh, produced one in his image. See, if you remember Abraham and Sarah, amen, they were waiting for the promise. The enemy interrupted and moved Sarah to convince Abraham to produce their own offspring, which became Ishmael, which started a whole other generation later on, which were rebellious towards God's call. This is where you got all of Islam and everything else now. Why? Because the enemy interrupted. But Ishmael was not the likeness of Abraham. Isaac was likeness of Abraham because the child was brought by Sarah and Abraham. Does everybody get it? The, call, the original. So here, 
Adam gets a kid in his own likeness, amen, because it came forth between Eve and him. Now you got 130 years. 130 years. Again, Adam and Eve, the original oneness, produced the original like image of Adam. But not the likeness of God. The likeness was still not re, uh, established yet. Only the image. Amen? Again, 130 years. Woo. There was no mention of other children by Eve or Adam. So you know Eve was out there producing too. Why? They were called to, they were still fulfilling their call. Eve was over here, Adam was over here, and they finally got together and had a kid. Hallelujah. There's a lot of kids on the earth then. To this day, to bear image, we're still there. Unless you're born again. Amen? So, in other words, even in your families, you may have somebody that bears the image of one another, but the likeness is different. That's about the heart. So, you, you, I'm, in other words, my brother and I, we may look alike, but boy, was I different compared to him. Until I was born again. Then I became more in the likeness and the character of, of Christ. But out there, he was more of the good boy. I was the bad boy. He was doing the right things occasionally. But I was doing the bad things all the time. Hallelujah. <laughs> and look at even Jesus. Jesus was looked upon as Mary and Joseph's son. You remember that? And the image. But they didn't know that he was the likeness of God in the heart because he was God. Amen. So there was a spiritual DNA, wasn't there? And, and when the Lord says be fruitful and multiply, one of the things he, his desire was that we become like-minded. That's what the likeness is about. Like-minded, like-mindedness. Amen? I mean, look at If people would complete what they're supposed to complete to complete, things would be so much better. We'd be so much far advanced in what's going on instead of allowing the inter enemy to interrupt. People giving up. Getting fearful. In Philippians chapter 1. So you got to remember that in that period of time of Adam and Eve, there wasn't a law that exposed sin. Amen. It wasn't until the law came that it was like, whoa, man, this is, I've been doing things wrong. Philippians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Complete to complete. Glory to God. Now, every one of us in this room has done something that we didn't complete. Amen? And then we, some, and we've regretted some of those things that we didn't complete. And that's where the enemy steps in. He loves to get you into a place where you don't complete and then beat you up for not doing it. Amen? I think Philip, Philip left my Bible. <laughs> Went on vacation. Philippians 1.3. Let's speak it. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests of you with all joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, is that work going to get complete without cooperation? No. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my change and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness, 
greatly. I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all what? Discernment. How many of y'all know we need knowledge and discernment, man? That you may approve the things which are what? Excellent. And that, you, and that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ through the glory and the praise of God. So that we would be approved the things that are excellence and approve the things that are not. Disapprove of those things. Amen? So here's an area where he's, he's speaking directly to complete. Is it per, personal complete to complete? And we go to Hebrews 10. You know, while we're, while we're going through the training and the process of things, if we'll keep our focus that everything we're doing is kingdom bound. So we're laboring unto the Lord. And again, today's a refreshing in the area to where I really believe that there's going to be a little bit more challenges coming. <laughs> and we got to stand strong in these areas. Amen? I don't know if you've noticed or not, but there's not a lot, there's not as much food on the shelves in places anymore. The things are beginning to deplete a little bit, but that's okay. It's just temporary. You know, there's a lot of things that are happening right now. There's such a, a tremendous battle in the unseen realm that's manifesting in the physical realm. But so many times we've allowed that incomplete, incompletion part of our life to still carry on. When God has said, have you repented? It's like unfulfilled vows. Have you repented from them? Yes. Well, then they're severed. Amen. And, and this is where we want to go move on because, you know, guilt and condemnation is, guilt basically is something that we, did, that we did that we didn't complete or we believe we didn't do it right. And if we didn't do it right, God forgave us. And he's always there to make a way of escape so we can restart over to what? Complete something to what? Complete. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10. In verse 32. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you what? You endured a great struggle with sufferings. Partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me and my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of what? Endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, or you've completed the assignment, you may receive the what? The promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but everyone, anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe in the saving of the soul. Again, complete the training for the purpose and the promise, because the training is going to bring me and you more into the likeness of Christ. Amen? So we complete something to complete. Now, when we complete something, a part of the character of Christ has been imparted in me and you. But it's not completed yet. It's the fullness of Christ. That's why Paul prayed that the fullness of Christ, that we'd have eyes with understanding so that the fullness of Christ would be finally manifested. So the fullness of Christ is not manifested in us, but we're completing something to be complete in him. So finally, the end result, we know it's going to continue on until we go home. Amen? But that training is experiencing things for me and you to help someone and to exchange a part of our old carnal nature for the new created divine nature and everything we do if we allow it to. But if you grumble and complain at every trial and tribulation, you're not making the exchange. Amen? That isn't going to happen. 
You'll stay, still stay miserable and in your own carnal state of being. There's too many unfinished things that are out there that we've not finished. 1 Corinthians 1. In verse 18. Is everybody okay? Complete to what? Complete. Why? So that we may be fruitful and multiply. But again, being fruitful and multiply is about multiplying, getting people born again so that they're like-minded with Christ and, and keeping them. You know, there's a lot of people that get saved. How long do they last without being a part of a, associate, a fellowship or, or being mentored? You know, they don't last too long, do they? In fact, the mind of Christ, they've never reached, a, say, a level of maturity to overcome. And we see that all over the place. That's why you get a lot of Christians that show up with a bottle of booze and a cigar in their hand and say, hey, I'm a believer. Yeah, right, homie. Right? And I got a word for you. Yeah, forget it. A lot of familiar spirits and demonic forces out there that are taking captive individuals. Verse 18. Let's go. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring them to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise and where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling. Brethren, that not many wise, according to the flesh, not many muddy, not many noble, are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, which things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, the righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Again, there's a place of training of the complete to complete. And, and, and in this, God gives me a new wisdom. It's available for anyone. And wisdom tells us what to do. Understanding tells us how to do it. Believe me, as you pray in the Spirit, things are released to you, and you don't even realize it. God will give you a vision. I can't tell you how many times he's answered me how to repair something. Or whatever it may be. I mean, we had a discussion this morning. He cracked me up, but I'm not going to go there right now with everything. But, um, so, uh, uh, but there's things that he'll just give you a vision of or he'll say that just like, snap, I would have never thought of that. And you know, it's him. But man, I'm telling you, praying in the Spirit brings that connection where the flow of the information comes to you. Because we struggle out there. Well, how to do this? What man just, if people just step back, that's why the Lord says, acknowledge me in all of your ways. But people will say, well, acknowledge the Lord. I acknowledge him. Nothing happened. Would you pray in the Spirit? Or did you just not wait long enough until you got an answer? You know, that drive through mentality. Amen. <laughs> But again, there's that place where he wants to complete something in us so that we can be completed. T Titus chapter 3. Verse 1. Titus 3.1. Complete to complete. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. 
Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm when? Constantly. Hmm. That those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid something. Foolish disputes, genealogy, contention, strivings about the law. For they are unprofitable and useless. Reject a device of man after the first and second admonishment. Knowing that such a person is warped and sinning and being self-condemned. Again, there's a regeneration by the cooperation with the Holy Spirit to complete an assignment of training to complete so that we become and make that exchange more of the likeness of his character and release our old character. Amen? So that his integrity is manifested. That the world will see him in us and not us. Believe me, when we are now signs and wonders, we're a miracle. <laughs> Believe me, we are miracles. Hallelujah. But we want to maintain that area, not compromising. Not complacent. Maintain, being consistent. Being alert and sensitive. Being discerning. Being able to see things through. You, knowing when it's God's time and when it's not God's time. You know, some people are still doing life on this planet, doing time. Instead of taking the opportunity of the time that we have. I mean, this is where I'm at right now. I don't have much time left. And I'm trying to get in as much as I can before I'm gone. I want to complete what God had called me to do. And, I, and, and we've got to be careful of all interruptions that God is trying to bring to us. I mean, that the enemy is trying to bring to us. Where God wants us to complete, to complete. Amen? The greatest legacy you can leave behind is the character of Christ. <laughs> That's what we want to leave behind. Well, they were foolish people, but they were sure righteous. They were strange people, peculiar, but they always had a good heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. First John chapter 3. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Is everybody there? 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called what? Children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in himself purifies himself just as he is pure. That's phenomenal. See, the world doesn't have that hope. We have that hope. We know that we're going to be changed. We know that we don't have to deal with this flesh no more. We know that we're going to live forever. <laughs> That's an awesome thing to know. The things that we have been trained for and prepared for, we have no excuse to over, not overcome. Amen? There is no excuse. Except selfishness. Amen? That's the, all, that's a, that's the only reason why oh, not, oh, not overcoming, because of selfishness. We're selfish in a way you can't overcome. In Ephesians chapter 4. Let's 
This is where we've got to examine ourselves so many times and, and everything. You, am I laboring for myself or am I laboring unto the Lord? And are the things that I'm doing, yes, look at, don't, don't get me wrong. We have to work to, to eat to whatever, yes. But even in that work to eat and, and, and buy things and whatever, we should still be laboring unto the Lord. Look into him, why? Because we look to him as the provider no matter what we're doing. God has made this way for this job. God has made his way f for me to do this. See, if we always keep them before us, no matter what, you can't go wrong. It's when we move them out of the way. I got this, Lord. Excuse me. No. That's why it's so important about being connected, being in fellowship, being accountable to one another. Hallelujah. We want to be fruitful and multiply. In verse seven, uh, 17, Ephesians 4, 17. Hallelujah. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind or way of thinking, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness and to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you've not so learned Christ. In other words, you haven't allowed Christ to train you. Indeed, you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you should what? Put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt. So it's still growing corrupt. Your old man is still growing corrupt. Amen? It's still growing corrupt. Look at you're growing. Your new man is growing, but your old man is still growing. There's that battle between the old and new, isn't there? The only way that you can overcome is to keep it crucified. Staying filled with the Spirit so there's a separation. Don't that put off that you're, the old man is corrupt according to deceitful lust. Oh, it is so lustful. You battle that every day. And be renewed in the thoughts of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. In other words, that you put on the ways of thinking of Christ. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak the truth of his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry, but don't sin. Don't not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. I think that's one of the main things. There's just, there's so many unfulfilled, unfinished things because people have given way to the place of the devil. They've been either offended, emotionally misled, making emotional decisions, whatever it may be. Taken out of position. We cannot give place to the devil. He warns us. That's how this whole thing started. That's how we have a cursed life. Amen? Our life was cursed until we came to Christ. Now it's blessed. But the old man is still cursed. He ain't getting blessed. And I ain't blessing him. Verse 28. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who is in need. And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, because you're going to eat it. But what is good for necessary edification? that it may impart grace to the hearers. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for redemption, the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Listen, you don't have to like everyone, but you got to love everyone. Amen. <laughs> that all may sound strange. You may, not, you may not like their likeness. Amen? But you still got to represent that God created them. And you have to love them for that. But we don't serve evil. Amen? Verse 32. And it says, Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. This is a guideline to complete, to become complete. 2 Thessalonians 1. Verse 
Oh, hallelujah. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 1. Let's speak it. Is everybody okay? Complete to complete. You know, uh, and, and everything that you're doing and, and laboring on to the Lord and whatever. Helping the house of God where God put placed you is vitally important. It's not just by financially. Amen? But voluntarily. Helping out as much as you can. You know, being a, an expression. Being a, an example to a, a new individual that comes in. You know, so that they're, they don't feel left out. Or, because, you know, when you come into a new place, you feel strange. You know? We, we want to welcome everyone. And, you know, you need to bring someone then. And welcome them in. We were at a, um, a meeting. Uh, it was, it's just a, kind of like a... A men's group it goes on once every two weeks and and there was a new guy sitting at the table there and uh I never met him. I, I'd never somebody he said he came in from the woods. Man, it touched my heart. Cause he had a sweet spirit about him. Anyways, he's supposed to be coming into the program Tuesday. God willing, he'll make it. <laughs> but again, sometimes it's just being available. And and not being not being afraid to hand somebody, ma'am. And so people were praying for people there, and I went out to everyone that was being, anyone that was a new, and I made sure everyone got a new penetrating prayer book in their hand too. I said, man, you need to be armed. I know you don't understand how to read the Bible, but here's something that will help you till you learn. Arming someone. Don't let them leave with nothing to give them. Amen? Man, we're to be ambassadors of Christ. We're to be as witnesses. Look, when we stand before God, how many people did we miss that God had brought before us? It's like, gosh, Lord, I didn't know. What am I doing now that's expanding your kingdom? What am I doing now? Am I really going the extra mile for you and not for me? Hallelujah. In verse 3, first, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. We are bound to give thank, to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. So we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is, man, is, is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted what? Worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you. So God's going to repay them. Amen. Even though you'd like to repay them. And give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God. And on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his who? Oh, do you get it? He's coming to be glorified in us. And you don't want to be out of position. And to be admired among all those who believe because of our testimony among you was believed. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and Lord and Jesus Christ. And everybody said amen. amen. To God be the glory. I got more, but I think that's plenty. Listen, be careful you don't fall into areas of regret. Offense. We're to avoid those things. We have the Holy Spirit. You have eternal radar. Amen? Sonar also. We are ready in season and out. We are armed and dangerous. We are eternal warriors in this temporary realm. 
and we are heavenly bound. But we go from complete to complete, allowing the likeness of Christ to have his way in us. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed that you have spoken to us today be imparted and protected by the blood of Christ and sealed by the anointing. For your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. In Jesus' name. <laughs>